Hey YouTube, what's going on? This is going to be probably the least formal video I've ever posted on my channel, but uh, I wanted to sort of make a bit of a video or a bit of a quick guide on the hard mode waves of the full front. Uh, reason being, I don't have time right this second to make a full guide, but I know a lot of people like to wait for me to make a guide, and I know people generally seem to like me doing stuff in a low tier gear, and I was able to complete a full hard mode run uh, with no food at all in low tier gear. So I'm wearing full obsidian armor that I have overcharged with Tockle, and then outside of that, I've got an Elder Wand, as well as a Virtus Book, and then just Scrimshaw, Emota Souls, and then I am wearing the Cape because you have to complete normal mode in order to access hard mode, so you would have the Cape at that point. You also might notice there is food in my invent and Beast of Burden. I just didn't end up actually having to eat any of it. So like partway through the run, I ended up just unkey binding all of it. But uh, it is a no food run. That's not like a scam or anything, which would be kind of a really weird thing to do to begin with. Um, but yeah, I don't have time right this second to make a full guide. So I thought I would sort of watch through, uh, watch through all the waves and sort of give some tips and some tricks and things that I found really helpful in completing them in a lower tier setup. Now, I'm also going to mention this was not a flawless run, but I will also mention how to get a flawless run in a setup that is identical to this. Uh, I'm also going to add I was intentionally not using Greater Chain because it's fairly expensive. I was using Greater Concentrated Blast, but uh, with Greater Chain, it would be significantly easier than uh, the way I was doing it. But uh, yeah, I think we can probably get into it. Toggle hard mode, get it started. And I'm likely to be kind of cutting things up a whole bunch and there will likely be a lot of edits, but uh, starting right off rip, the first wave, you get a bunch of the meleeers and then you get two of the bats. The thing you wanna prioritize the most is the bats, but the meleeers can do a lot of damage if you let them punch you a bunch. So you definitely wanna be praying. It's not a soul split wave. And I think for the majority of this sort of fight kill me experience or this inferno experience, there aren't a ton of mobs that you wanna be tanking without prayer. And you're gonna notice that uh, that's sort of the thing I try and prioritize the most when I'm working through these waves here. Highest priority overall is if there's a bat attacking you, you want to get rid of the bats. They drain your prayer, they also drain your adrenaline, and they deal damage. They are extremely annoying. In wave two, you're going to get a couple rangers that spawn as well as a couple meleers. And I'm kind of following the rule of not wanting to be attacked by multiple different combat styles at once. So I'm going to start off by standing to the northeast side where the first ranger is going to spawn. And the objective is going to be to clear that ranger very, very quickly because the rangers spawn right before the meleers. It'll take the meleers a couple seconds to get to me. So I'm going to use Omni Power there, clear the first ranger, and then I'm going to surge through and then I'm going to get on the second ranger. Right now, I'm going to use my stuns like Asphyxiate and Deep Impact to be able to get a bunch of damage on the ranger without actually being hit. And that way I can pray melee. I tried to do a little prayer flicking here, but you really don't need to. You can just pray melee here and focus on stunning the one ranger that is attacking you. After that point, it's effectively a repeat of the first wave. You got some meleeers, you got some bats, you can clear them, and alternatively, you can also get them stuck behind the rubble or kite them with soul spit on just to get some HP back, but that's not really a necessary thing. It's just, if you do see me kiting at times with soul spit, like what I'm doing now, that's just to get a bit of an extra heal and because I didn't really feel like just sitting there and tanking them with melee prey, although they do not deal a ton of damage, especially in obsidian armor. Last melee to deal with is fairly simple. These guys get stuck on everything, but you have to be pretty careful because they can rubber band a bit, which is where it looks like it's in a different position than it actually is. So you'll take melee damage, even though it looks like you're standing really far away from the target. So uh, definitely do be careful. Um, something else I'm gonna mention here is Zuck says fall and burn to ash in the game chat. Anytime you have the fire that like sweeps across the screen, and uh, this fight is way easier with game sounds on because it's actually a voiced line. You don't need all the game sounds on, you don't need the music on, just the voice line. And then whenever Zuck says the line, you know that you want to move roughly like two to three squares in pretty much any direction and you should be fairly safe. I will also mention this hits like two, two and a half thousand damage every hit uh, if you're not wearing obsidian armor, but obsidian armor also lowers your typeless damage. So in OB armor, it's going to hit like a 1k per tick. So it's fairly safe and you should have some time to get out of it if you were to accidentally get hit. Uh, now we're heading into wave three. I'm once again starting north. And I'm also gonna mention here, the safe spot that is most popular is the one all the way southeast. And it is quite good, but I found positioning wise, starting north for most of these waves was a lot better for me in particular, um, because everything just ends up being stuck in a really good way. And you'll notice in a lot of later waves as well, everything ends up lured perfectly because I'm not starting in that south spot. Um, so that's kind of a personal preference thing, but I really like the north starts. Um, for this wave, sort of the similar thing. We've got some different combat styles that are going to spawn soon. So I'm going to Omni power this melee, get it cleared very quickly. And then in time for the Ranger to spawn, I am going to be uh, just about ready to pray mage with my target almost dead. 
Now, I did make a mistake here. If I'd continued standing where I was, everything would have been lured and I would have just had to take on the two rangers with range prey, but I did not do that. I kind of messed up and now I've got a melee on me, so I'm kind of in a situation now where I decided to flee to the southeast corner to sort of switch safe spots. But uh, this was really an unnecessary move, but it can help as sort of a backup plan. If you find yourself in bad positioning, something I did a lot is I just throw on a shield, use reflect, and then move to a different position and see if it works out a little better there. And as you can see right here, um, the mailers are all stuck and I'm only taking range damage right now. I'm killing the bat because the bats can see you over pretty much everything. And then I'm just gonna sit in soul split for the next little bit um, on the remainder of these mobs. Also worth noting, if uh, the boss does say fall and burn to ash when you're in this spot, you can normally go all the way east and you should be safe, although there's a slight chance that you get one that goes like all the way west to east, in which case you'd have to sort of relure them or leave your safe spot. Um, but that's sort of the end of wave three, and there's not a whole lot to uh, to be said about it. Uh, there were a lot of soul split opportunities, and then you'll see as soon as you're taking range damage, I'm going to likely get back on the ranger because may as well get the ranger down, and then I can go back to soul splitting and getting all my life points back up to full. So wave four is one of the repeated waves. It's a challenge wave and it goes over, it's wave four, nine, and 14, I believe are all exactly identical. Uh, so how it works is there are three igneous mobs, one of each combat style. What you can do is you can either kill, um, you can either kill all three of them and then leave all the other mobs alone. Uh, and then as soon as you hit your special action button, all the other ones will be insta-killed. Or you can do what I'm doing here, which is I'm actually gonna clear everything. It's going to take a little more time, but it's going to be significantly easier. And once again, we're following sort of the same logic, which is I don't want to take damage from multiple combat styles at once. You'll see I'm using Metamorphosis here. You could also just kind of chuck an Omni Power. But the objective here is I'm standing north, um, northwest, sorry, directionally challenged. And uh, I'm going to clear this melee as quickly as I can. I'm going to lead with a stun because you've got a stun. And then I'm going to Omni Power and we're going to get some good damage on there. The objective is to get this melee or mostly dead right before two rangers are about to spawn. Uh, they're going to spawn right now. Um, so now, as you can see with where I'm standing, I'm now only being attacked by rangers. There are three rangers attacking me and I am going to just clear all of them. The melee up there is stuck and then that one is stuck as well. So uh, order of operations, we're going to kill the meleeers, or sorry, kill the rangers and then uh, we'll clear the meleeers one at a time just to get some soul splitting back as well. Uh, something I'm going to add about these rangers, the one at the bottom, the really tall one, they deal more damage the longer they're stationary. They gain stacks. So this one right here has 70 stacks. Um, and you can actually go all the way up to the highest I've ever seen was 700. Uh, so if you see yourself taking a ton of range damage, literally just make them move in any way. And if they take one single step, all their stacks go back down to zero and they stop being able to hit hard. So uh, my recommendation would be, like if you're on like 400, 500 stacks, you're not playing ranged, I would just like surge down that way probably. And uh, yeah, then all those stacks would get completely reset. Um, so yeah, this is all pretty straightforward. I'm just clearing these rangers. Don't think you need to watch that part. And I'm just gonna keep skipping ahead here. Okay. Um, actually, I wanna go back a little bit there. Um, for this melee, what I'm doing is I'm actually just going to stand sort of at max distance. And then at max distance, what's gonna happen is these majors won't actually be able to have the attack range to hit me. Uh, so the melee is trapped and the melee is actually blocking for me. So as soon as this melee dies, the two mages will be able to attack me at that point. Uh, so there we go, melee goes down and then I'm actually just gonna move for the sky burning very quickly, which is a really cool animation. <laughs> and then uh, I'm gonna get on the mages. And once again, this is a very slow way to do this wave. If I was doing like a speed run on my main or I was going for like farming for a long time, I would just kill the special mobs. But if you're going for your first cape and you're worried about saving supplies, it's a really good way to save a ton of supplies. It's also worth noting, as long as I'm not taking a bleed or anything, I can just throw on a shield and grab a resonance and that's gonna heal me a couple thousand health anytime I want it. Okay, now we're on to the last igneous mob, last special one. And for this guy, you just need to stand inside of the shield to be able to do full damage to it. Uh, so yeah, I don't know why I'm praying range here, but I'm just kind of standing here dealing with this mob and uh, lowering his life points. Now, once his life points go all the way down to zero, what you could do is you can hit your special action button. But before that, actually, one other thing I want to mention here is uh, if you kill everything in this wave, um, everything's gonna respawn except for the three igneous mobs and then your special action button will insta-kill them. So you want to fairly quickly get over and down to Zuck. You're gonna notice here as soon as this mob dies to poison, you have like three seconds or so before everything else respawns, uh, which is gonna happen right there. So you're gonna want to pretty quickly hit the special action button, insta-kill them all, and then you're dealing damage to Zuck. 
In hard mode, you need to do 100,000 damage. With lower tier gear, this is quite difficult. I think if I'd been on Maniacal, it would have been possible to get it done in that time, but uh, it's, it's quite difficult. So I would recommend, honestly, especially for a first run, not even worrying too, too much about it. As you can see, we're about 16,000 damage short. And what's going to happen is we are going to have to repeat this wave, which is completely fine. And you're likely to have to do this a lot of times, especially when you're learning. And it is exactly identical to what it was last time. So we're going to lure it the exact same way. We're going to kill the mobs in the exact same way we did last time. And absolutely nothing changes here. Um, okay. So now let's fast forward to the end of this wave because, you know, you just saw it. So we'll, uh, we'll run it a second time. And this is going to be where we actually deal damage to Zuck and we get the 100,000 damage done. Uh, now, if you are going for a flawless run, this is where I'm going to pause really quick and say it will be a lot easier if you have a Guthic Staff. Uh, Greater Chain will also help a bunch too, but the Guthic Staff especially is very, very, very clutch. Um, but here we go, gonna let the boss be immune, and I was not going for a flawless run here. Um, in particular, because it doesn't really matter. When you're looking at getting the drops that are worth 3 bill, flawless run is not absolutely essential. Um, but I will talk about exactly how you would get a flawless run here. If you wanted to get a flawless run, what you would do is you would greater chain, and then use Omni Power, and that will instantly clear three of them from full HP, uh, whether you're in a sunshine or a meta, and then you could just do whatever you want on the last two. But I was not doing that. I was killing them one at a time. And the objective here for like a, a standard hard mode run is you just want to clear enough of them that you're not going to take too much damage when they blow up. Their base damage for each one you miss is about 4,000 damage. It's going to be reduced because I'm in Obsidian Armor, but uh, the main thing is just you don't want to take that 4,000 damage. So as you can see, I clear four of the five, and then I power burst for that last hit. Um, but yeah, for a flawless run as well, the other thing you could do is if you were on Maniacal, uh, that would also help significantly. And I found the combo of just doing a greater chain and then a Guthic Staff spec was doing about 16,000 damage in this setup. So it's pretty easy once you get, uh, get kind of the hang of it. But I will say this is the toughest sort of DPS check when you're going for a flawless run. So it's fairly realistic to, if you like happen to mess this up or have to reset a bunch of times, um, to have to get back to wave five a couple times over. And it's really not the end of the world. It's pretty early on in the wave. So resetting here is not the end of the world. For wave six, you're going to get a bunch of rangers at spawn. I think it's five of them. You're going to get a Jad all the way south, and then you're going to get two melee areas. And I actually made a mistake in this run, but you pretty much just want to stand northeast or northwest, and everything should lure very well. So I'm dealing with the first set of rangers, um, and the melee areas that are going to spawn in a second are also just going to get lured perfectly by the walls they happen to be standing behind, which is quite convenient. Uh, the mistake I make here is I uh, should have been ever so slightly more west so that this melee area over here also got blocked. I didn't do that, and as a result of that, this phase got a little bit uh, a little bit wild. But uh, yeah, that was a, a slight mistake that I made, where if I'd been one square further over, a melee would have got stuck. Um, so at the same time, I'm now avoiding a condition where I'm going to be attacked by range and melee at the same time. So we're kind of in a bit of a pickle here, and uh, we're going to want to get out of that situation. So first thing I'm trying to do is I'm just kiting the meleeers a little bit. And then what I'm going to try and do here is I think I'm going to try and get behind this block right over here. Um, so that I'm only taking range damage from that point on. And as you can see, the meleeers are now correctly lured, and so is the Jad. Um, a lot of this is just sort of getting a little bit familiar with the area, um, but I will also say there are about 10 different ways to relure any wave. And I think the time or the place where people waste the most food or waste the most supplies and then end up running out is when you just kind of stand there face tanking a bunch of things at once. You've got kind of two backup plans. One, relure if you can. And if you're not able to do a relure, what you're going to want to do is get that shield on and start using some defensive abilities like Reflect or Barricade or even Immortality, which we're going to start doing a whole lot a little bit later on here. Uh, as you can see, we are going to just continue to deal damage here. Really what I should have done, and I would have done if I had thought this was a no food run, because at this point I thought I was just going to use food later on, um, you'd want to kill the Ranger first just so that you can, you know, for free soul split up on the melee air, but it's not the end of the world unless you're specifically doing a no food kill. And that is going to be the conclusion of wave six in a little bit. But of course, we will have to take out the Jad. Now, I'm slightly low HP here, and Jad does a lot of damage. And there's an ability that heals a lot of damage on a singular hit, and that is Resonance. So I'm just going to hit a quick res, and just like that, I'm on full HP. And the Jads, it's actually very easy to gain life points on them, because as a general rule, if you're hitting all of your prayer flicks, they don't actually hit any damage at all on you if you get your flick correctly. So you can get a res, get up to full HP, and then you're pretty much chilling the rest of the way down. 
Doesn't really matter how you kill the Jad, just focus on your prayer flicks and focus on, you know, not getting hit by fire. He should be in a pretty good spot here. And this wave, what happens is you've got a mage and then you have two bats and then I believe two melees as well that spawn in. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by trying to clear the mage as quickly as possible because everything else that spawns in is going to, uh, you know, attack with different combat styles. So we kind of got the jump on the mage and sorry, I stand corrected. It's not two meleers, it's two rangers, but exact same premise. There's one mage, two rangers. So we're going to get rid of the mage right away so that we can just camp range prey. And that is exactly what we do. Range prey is on. And now I'm trying to get the bats stuck behind the ranger and I was only partially successful. So I've got one bat to deal with. Um, but I believe the other bat is stuck behind, uh, behind something there, a little bit of rebel. The safe spots in this wave are, uh, or in this entire kiln are absolutely insane. Um, because I dealt with that mage early, this whole situation is a whole lot easier and we're basically just dealing with rangers now. Uh, so we're kind of very quickly, easily going to handle them, going to do damage to them. And as you can see, me stepping back there was just to lure that melee I saw that melee was coming up to me. I didn't really want that. So uh, I step back a bit, but uh, the meleeers are really easy to trap because you can also trap them on other mobs. So like if that meleeer were to run towards me right now, what I could do is I could just surge through that pile of rangers when it got close to me and then he would just end up stuck behind all the rangers. Uh, so yeah, it's pretty straightforward at this point. I'm also in going out of my way to not use greater chain, um, but generally what you'd want to do is you'd want to use greater chain and then omni power because that is an extremely strong combo that'll basically clear like three mobs all at once, super, super effectively and super easily. Uh, something else I'll mention is if you're going for a flawless run and you're having trouble with the uh, the very first DPS check, something you can do that's kind of nice is you can pop Manny for the start, which I mentioned, but as soon as you get through that wave, you can then take off Manny and replace it for something like Majorat or a Runic Accuracy or a Vampirism or a Penance, and they're all kind of good options, and it's totally up to you what you want to do. Uh, so here what I'm doing is I use Resonance um, just to heal, you know, a couple thousand life points for free. It may as well at a certain point. And then, uh, yeah, we're going to clear off this melee with uh, with Soul Split because that's uh, always a really good thing to do, especially anytime there's a melee on you, you want to be able to put it in a spot where you can Soul Split off it. And I'm actually going to gain like 4,000 life points just from that one mob. And once again, we're going back to the north spot uh, just because that's sort of where I'm used to starting these waves and I think it's really effective. Uh, this wave, I made a mistake and I realized it right away. I attacked the ranger right away. It's a ranger that spawns with two mages and then a bunch more rangers spawn. So really what's going to be easier to kill is going to be the mages. So I quickly get off of this ranger and then uh, I'm going all the way to the northwest corner and I'm hoping that this mage gets stuck and I can clear this mage quickly before everything else spawns. Uh, so that's sort of the plan in my head. Um, and as you can see, all the rangers spawn in and I'm able to clear that first mage without taking too, too much damage. Now, my, my, my lure was off here. So if I had stood two squares over this way, uh, this wave would have been done flawlessly and perfectly. But because I messed it up, I actually end up taking a bunch of damage if I remember correctly and I'm now stuck doing the one thing that you really don't want to do which is tanking magic damage and range damage simultaneously. At this point I've killed the mage and what I'm doing here with surge is it's just to make all of these guys move because once again the second they plant their feet every time they hit you they deal I believe it's 10% more damage with each hit and I don't really want that in my life so we're just gonna very quickly move to a different spot change locations and uh, now we've basically just got a wave full of rangers and they shouldn't all be attacking us at once. If we are in a situation where we're getting hit by 10 rangers at once though, um, a couple of good options. What I choose to do is hit the barricade button. But the other thing I could have done here is if I had gone all the way south, um, I could have gotten them trapped behind that melee and then only one or two would have been able to attack me at once and I could have just cleared them kind of one at a time. Uh, but as you can see, because I am in a barricade here, I'm just sort of tanking them as much as I can and you know, I've got soul split up doesn't really matter what I do here. I'm just trying to gain a little bit of HP. And then I do end up going south to lure them there. And that's a way more effective lure because if I go all the way south to the entranceway, I should be saved from a whole bunch of damage taken because now instead of all of them piling me all at once, it's just one or two of them tops. And uh, yeah, that's sort of the go-to for wave eight. It's not uh, not incredibly fancy or, or technical, but you need to make sure you don't mess up that initial lure. Um, but yeah, from that point, Fairly safe to do, and you'll see I'm using the Devotion ability fairly often. It's quite helpful to have, just because it gives you full 100% protection from your prayers. It's a good one. There we go. As you can see, I'm using Omni Power. I'm not using Greater Chain beforehand, just because I wanted this run to be kind of a, a run without some of the more expensive abilities, with the exception of Greater Concentrated Blast. Um, I will also mention, I really wish there was a way to like turn off viable abilities, like if I could have regular Barge and regular Fury and all that stuff for guides, but unfortunately that is not a thing presently so it's not really a great option and here i kind of made a mistake 
I had 3,500 life points. And at this point I was thinking, yeah, I can probably do this with no food. And I chose to use immortality. What I'm really doing here is I wanted them all to move because I know they're all on, on pretty high stacks. But I think if I were to do this again, I would have just stayed south and, uh, and played it that way. And I think it would have been a little bit more effective. The thing about immortality is it gives you 25% damage reduction for 30 seconds. Um, but also, ideally, you want it to proc sort of right at the end. Um, because it will give you about 4,000, 4,500 life points when it procs. So it's kind of a, a, a balancing game where you don't want to, you know, have your Immort not proc and then you get left on no life points. But also, if you like overshoot it, uh, you can end up just dying right after. So here, the reason I'm soul splitting is um, for a couple seconds, I was thinking, okay, the Rangers are going to do enough damage to proc my Immortality and then uh, I'll end up back on 5,000 life points, which is great. But I realized there's only 10 seconds on my Immort and it doesn't really look like it's happening. So as a result of that, I end up just running a full lap and I'm back in the south spot. The only real difference is this wave took way longer than it should have. And uh, the Rangers did end up moving, which is actually, you know, pretty good for me because the Rangers moving means they're not stacking up quite as much damage. Uh, there I grab a quick little res, 1600, and then I am just back to doing what I was doing before, which is I'm just standing at max distance and only one Ranger is attacking me at a time, which is kind of exactly what you want. Um, okay, so this wave is done. Fast forwarding over to wave nine. Wave nine is a repeat of wave four. It's exactly the same and I do it the exact same way. So there's like really no point showing it. Nothing happens, nothing changes. And then uh, it's gonna be the exact same thing where I did not get the 100,000 damage. I was 10K off. So I'm gonna repeat wave nine a second time and I'm gonna do it the exact same way I did before where you're dealing with things kind of one at a time. Uh, now, after wave nine, you've got the special challenge. This guy, his deal is he will only take hit splats of over 3,000. So what you want to do is, if you can, throw a vulnerability bomb, um, and you're basically going to use abilities that hit really, really high. Um, so things like bleeds won't do anything, and you also definitely want to be in an ultimate like Sunshine or Metamorphosis. So here I'm going to throw a vulnerability bomb, and then uh, my smoke cloud splashed, which was terribly unfortunate. And then I think what I did wrong there too is, uh, did my Ditto splash? No, my Ditto didn't splash. Um, but yeah, as you can see right here, uh, I'm clearing him fairly well. And then the reason I'm not able to finish him off here is because I didn't bring a Guthic Staff with me. Uh, had I brought a physical Guthic Staff, it's as easy as just killing him in one shot. But technically, me using Tsunami at the end did not count. So I'm kind of 0 for 2 in a way. Um, but yeah, the, the trick to that would just be, even if you don't have an EOF, like a literal physical Guthic Staff hits like a 5k. Other thing that works is the Maniacal Aura also just does a ton of damage. Okay, but that's Wave 10 done. And uh, Wave... Or sorry, that's wave nine done. Wave 10, you get two Jads. They both spawn on the north side. So what I'm gonna do, uh, they spawn with a couple of mages. I think it's three mages and two uh, two bats and one melee. Uh, what I'm gonna do right here is I'm actually gonna start off in the southeast save spot, which is not uh, something I've done a whole lot of thus far, but it's a really nice spot for all the Jad waves in particular, except for the first one, because you're gonna see that it lures the Jads perfectly. Uh, you're also going to note that I'm standing um, pretty far south here because I know there's a melee that's going to spawn later. I just want to make sure he gets lured. I'm praying magic. And as you can see, there are two Jads that are spawned. There's one all the way north and there's one all the way northwest. And uh, yeah, this one's pretty straightforward as well. We're just going to clear the mages kind of one at a time. These guys get pretty pesky. They can do a ton of damage. So you need to be uh, very, very careful where you position them. Um, but as soon as, uh, or sorry, as long as you can kill them sort of fairly quickly on spawn and they're not hitting you for too long, they're not too, too bad. What they end up doing is they spawn a minion, and then whenever the minion spawns, they seem to just do a ton of damage and be extremely rude. Uh, so anyway, we're going to clear off these mobs. It's just three nice, easy mobs. And then actually, I will show you the path that I run to uh, to get the Jad lured correctly, just because I do think it's slightly important. Um, so what I did here is I walked this way to avoid the fire, and I'm actually just going to pull the Jad out of its safe spot. You don't have to do it like that, um, but uh, I thought it would be a good way to allow me to sort of free the Jad without, you know, accidentally shaking the other one loose. You can also wrap around the east side, and if you stand sort of where my cursor is, that will also allow you to attack the Jad that's uh, that's stuck over there. At this point, I've got one mage left, and the Jad, obviously, you're going to prayer flick the Jad and prioritize that. That is a lot more important, and uh, you don't have to worry too, too much about if you're taking damage here, because worst case scenario, you can just grab a quick little rezo as soon as the mage is dead. Now, if I remember correctly here, I wanted to tank a Jad hit just to see what it would do in Obsidian Armor. I know a lot of people kind of freak out on the Jads just because um, it's like the idea that if you miss a Prayer Flick, you're going to die. And as you can see right there, 3,700 damage is all I took wearing full Obsidian Armor. So 
the jads really aren't something you need to be necessarily stressed about because i could just full-on tank two jad hits or even three jad hits most likely and uh, not have anything to worry about on the hp front i can just kind of chill out and uh yeah i could work my way through the jads just like that okay so that's the jad done um now waves 12 and 13 are absolutely insane i would i would say they're probably the most difficult parts of this entire challenge and there was a lot that I did in this uh, particular kill where I did not need to use food, but I could have made this a lot easier on myself with better positioning. My positioning here was like absolutely abysmal and I'm gonna basically be showing you what not to do on this wave. Because although I didn't need to eat food, I just, I made so many mistakes in, uh, in sort of a very short period of time and I ended up having to use a bunch of defensives, which is kind of the panic button. Okay, so one thing I am doing fairly well is I'm not standing just straight north. I am, you know, I've picked either a northeast or a northwest so that hopefully a lot of mobs do get blocked. Um, but the mistake I made is because I stood too far west, that ranger and that mage both got shook loose. So now I've got that mage coming towards me, that ranger coming towards me, that ranger coming towards me, that mage coming towards me, and then I have the two big mages where only one of the two is going to be lured. And this is uh, sort of a this is sort of a mistake, or it definitely was a mistake, because at this point I now have two rangers and three mages all attacking me at once, which is like exactly what you don't want to have happen. Uh, so here, what I should have done is I should have moved immediately, gone to the opposite side of the room, and seen what happened. Instead, I elected to try and blitz the first mage as quickly as possible, because I've kind of made a bunch of mistakes and I'm getting piled by a number of things at a time. Uh, it's time to rearrange. I don't want to just stand in here and you know if I was eating this would have cost me like eight brews just spam brewing the entire time um, while taking more and more damage you don't really want to do that so what I'm going to do is I am going to use reflect uh, which I've just done there just to have my damage taken and then I am surging to change up the order of things because I do not like the arrangement thus far so I'm going to change my order up I'm going to kill the bat because that's you know generally very important to do and they're very annoying and then now I'm just standing against the south wall um, this was almost a really, really good lure um, if that ranger hadn't been able to attack me. It would have worked out really, really nicely. But unfortunately, the ranger is still able to see me over the mages, and I'm taking a lot of damage from multiple combat styles. If this wasn't a no food run, I would have just eaten up, and then I would have tried to take out the ranger as quickly as I could. Um, or the mages, actually. It doesn't really matter which one, but I think the ranger would have made more sense to take out. But unfortunately, uh, well, because it was a no food run, don't really have the option to do that. I can't really convert food into HP and then turn that into DPS. So instead, uh, I elect to hit the barricade button, which is a very good backup plan. I also use the corruption abilities because they work very well with soul split. And now I'm just standing and tanking everything because I want to heal as much as I possibly can with my soul split. Now that my Cade is about to end, I elect to relure once again because I want to make sure these rangers aren't planning their feet for too, too long at once. I, uh... Don't want them to be able to hit me five and six and seven Ks. And because of that, you know, we try and keep moving as often as possible. And this lure is actually not terrible. I've got one mage and one ranger attacking me. The mage doesn't have a ton of life points left. So we're just going to kill the mage really quick. And then we're going to be able to get on the ranger. Um, the one thing to be careful about in this safe spot in particular is sometimes that magma vent on the floor will open up and you'll get a burn debuff. I've got one on my debuff bar right now. But if it's on fire and you're standing under it, it's a lot of magic damage. And it's probably not something you want to do. At this point, I probably played this safer than I needed to. I used Immortality, and uh, I definitely didn't need to, but once again, I think playing it safe is kind of a good thing in a boss encounter like this for the simple reason that, you know, there's no need to complete it in a certain time frame, and defensive abilities are extremely strong. So to me, they're just kind of worth using. They're at your disposal, and, you know, I could have saved a minute or two on this wave for sure by doing it not like this, but uh, at the end of the day, I, uh, I figured out a way to do it. And uh, I think that's kind of the most important thing. And those abilities are strong and they're there to be used. Okay, pardon my face. It is, in fact, a different day kind of doing this thing in two sections. We're going to pick this up right where we left off on wave 12. Um, so what I do here is the rangers kind of have their feet planted. I don't really like my placement up there. So I decided to use immortality. And this was another mistake with Immort where I wasn't actually able to get it to proc before uh, the point that it ran out of time, which is terribly unfortunate. Uh, the other thing too about the mages is the disciple they can summon, um, what they'll do is they'll take the mob next to them and make them immune to damage, which can be extremely frustrating. So I would actually consider the mages, as soon as they spawn the disciple, um, probably as highest priority. I think you probably want to get rid of them as quickly as you can. So right here, my Immort doesn't proc. So I basically just lost 5,000 life points there because if it goes off, you get, you know, all the, all the life points back for that. 
Um, but we're going to continue here and I'm going to now do the emergency panic button things that uh, you would do, which is I'm just looking at which defensives I've got available. I see I've got Devo in about 13 seconds. So I decide to use Reflect to uh, kind of buy me a little bit of time before that point. Uh, now we're still running around. I'm using preparation and I end up exactly back where I was at the start of this wave. And then I end up hitting a second barricade which uh, once again, this is not how I would do this wave. I think we outlined, uh, well, yesterday, but like a couple of minutes ago, um, the things that I would have done different and, and the really good opportunities there were to kind of convert food into more DPS. But um, what you will notice here is there's only one singular thing attacking me. The Rangers are trapped and this is actually a really good configuration. So once again, sort of by shuffling up the deck a bit and moving around when we were in a bad spot, uh, we've managed to actually shuffle everything around in such a way that we're in a really, really good spot here. To, uh, to continue that wave. Um, so yeah, this wave sort of continues. You see me grab a resonance there. That's a good thing to do. The Zex will put a burn on you and you'll see these little magic hits and it's on your debuff bar. You can free them to clear the burn and then grab a res because you don't really want it to get sniped. Um, but yeah, the exact same thing goes here where I'm now going to be attacking um, this ranger and not taking any damage from the mages because they are trapped behind, which uh, ends up working really nicely. And I think a lot of this too is instead of standing directly like right where my cursor is, um, if you go a little further back, you can generally just take a bunch of uh, a bunch of the mobs and, and take them at max range so they can't actually hit you, which is extremely helpful. Okay, got the last mage done, and now we are into the final, I would say, difficult wave, and I'd say probably the most difficult wave. Basically, the objective for this wave is you want to clear this one ranger right off rip. There's a second ranger that spawns all the way, like where my cursor is. Uh, that's really easy to trap pretty much automatically. So plan A is I'm going to clear this ranger and then at that point I should be able to just pray mage for the rest of the wave. But we'll see uh, what I end up doing here. It is a bunch of mages that spawn. It can be a little scary, but uh, yeah, priority one is if you've got a Dren for it, uh, clearing that ranger first right off rip is going to put you in a way better spot than what we ended up doing here. Um, still, the second ranger is trapped and uh, yeah, I would strongly recommend a north start for this wave. I just think it works out really, really nicely. Um, what I ended up doing instead was hitting the barricade button. And once again, I should be targeting that first ranger. I shouldn't be going over to the safe spot. Um, although if I hide behind here, that ranger won't be able to hit me. And that one's going to get trapped too, which is sort of what I'm going for here. I uh, kind of shuffled up the deck. And as you can see here, I'm now only being attacked by one singular mage, which should work out pretty well until um, the burn to ash. So I should be able to, you know, take things on one at a time in this little safe spot, which is very effective. I know I'm starting a lot of waves north, but this is a really nice backup plan just because it allows you to block things from so many different angles. It's extremely, extremely effective. We are back on this mage and it's sort of the same deal. I am burning, but it's absolutely tiny hits. So I'm not really bothering to click on them or anything. Um, and then unfortunately we got a burn to ash, which I had to step back to dodge. What I've done here is I've used immortality and I'm actually just using it for HP. Um, effectively what I'm doing is I want it to proc kind of right away. It'll get me up to 5k life points. And in the meantime, while I'm waiting for it to proc and my prayers off, uh, I'm just going to clear that mage. And then once again, we're back to, you know, being attacked by one singular combat style at a time. Um, this ranger has 50 stacks, which isn't too, too bad. They can go as high as the highest I've seen is 700. So, you know, 50, 60, 70, 80 isn't too, too bad. And then this ranger, because I just walked him a square right there, he would have been on like 700 stacks and instead he is going to be on zero stacks and then 10 with his very first attack. Um, so yeah, that was uh, sort of a, a well done thing there just to make sure the ranger is always moving. It's a lot of the same things that we've talked about uh, a whole lot earlier, um, but they really apply through all of these waves and there isn't a ton of like mentality change that really has to happen here. Uh, you're also going to note now there's one ranger left in the, in the wave. Everything else is magic type and I am happy just kind of tanking these mages. I did hit a barricade while I was reshuffling just in case uh, the lure didn't go very well. But the lure is in a spot that I'm pretty happy and we are now, you know, in a place where I'm just dealing with mages and that should be relatively simple to get through. Um, especially if you're in a situation where you're willing to use food. But the other thing you'll see me do a lot is I'm using the devotion ability um, and then I'm killing targets to extend it. And that is an extremely powerful thing you can do. The other thing that works really well with Debo is if you use devotion, but there's also like a ranger attacking you, you're praying mage. The cool thing you could do with that is you can then hit a rezo and you can res the range hit. Um, because uh, Rezo does not get overridden by Devo because all those one hit splats don't take it. Uh, so that's another really nice kind of way to get a heal. And now clearing out the most difficult wave in the entire uh, caves or the entire Inferno, um, we're just going to finish off this Ranger and then get on, or sorry, finish off the Mage and then get on to the Ranger. If I can skip ahead, there we go. Ranger is going down. 
And wave 14 is the exact same wave that you guys have seen about 100 times by this point. Well, really about four times at this point. So we're going to skip through that. Uh, what you're going to do here if you want to get a flawless run is just use the barricade button. It's uh, by far the easiest way to do it. You don't have to think at all. Um, but that very first one in the middle attacks you with typeless. So you need to use like resonance or disruption shield to take no damage from it. Uh, the other two are um, are typed and there's a ranged attack and a magic attack. That's the magic one. That's the ranged one. And I believe if you use devotion and prayer flick correctly, it will still count for flawless. But you do have to nullify the damage. So simply hitting the prayer flick by itself is not enough to count for a flawless run. And you've got this last melee hit, um, which, sorry, this last typeless hit, I should say, that uh, you could disrupt the rezo. And then after that, we are into the triple jads wave. The three jads spawn one, two, and then three kind of my is there. And there's a super easy way to lure it. It's exactly the same as what we did last time. So I am literally just going to surge all the way down. And just like that, all of the jads are completely lured <laughs> as simple as it gets. And then all I'm going to do is I am going to continue to pull this one over and then I'm going to attack it. And I believe if I stand in this whole area out here, I'm also completely safe from all of them. Like they are completely and utterly stuck. Uh, now, jads are, you know, fairly simple. I think you guys know the drill with them. If you miss a prayer flick, you can grab a res. But outside of that, I do throw a Vuln Bomb on the jads just to speed them up a little bit because, you know, I want to be here for an hour and not for like four hours. Um, but yeah, there's really not a whole lot of anything fancy going on here. It's just jads. And then I move on to the second jad. And then I move on to the third jad. Um, now, after the three jad waves, you have Haraken. Haraken can spawn either all the way east or all the way west. He's got 300,000 life points. And the main thing you want to do is avoid the, uh, and, I'll, and I'll point it out when it happens. You want to avoid the attack that kind of lands on your feet and saps your adren because that will make the wave take significantly more time. Um, it's also possibly worth soul splitting here, especially at the start when there aren't too many tentacles attacking you. You'll probably gain HP, but you'll see I threw a Vuln Bomb just against this lip. I am going to chuck up a Sunshine and then I'm just going to do as much damage as I can. Now, I'm going to show you the mechanic to look for. Um, basically, see that thing that shoots up right up there? Uh, it can happen on the right and on the left side. Whenever that happens, there's going to be a projectile that lands directly at your feet uh, where your character is standing. So as soon as you see that, if you move a tile, you will be completely safe. So see, I move back, and that is not hitting me at all. I uh, had to kind of lose my sunshine for a little bit. Got repossessed by some fire because, you know, I don't want to tank the fire for too long. And then I am back attacking Haraken. Um, now... When it says Hurricane is bombarding you, you want to step a couple squares back from where you are. It, it creates this massive cross, and anytime you get hit, you get a bunch of damage taken, and it also takes away your adrenaline. So it's quite annoying in terms of clearing Hurricane a little bit more quickly as well. So whenever you see the bombardment, um, yeah, you want to step two tiles back. For me, I just ended up running really, really far. I happened to be away from my sunshine, but if it was in your sunshine, just, yeah, two tiles back, and you should be all good to go. Should not hit you at all. Now it's kind of more of the same. Not a whole lot to uh, to pay attention to or focus on. Um, as you can see there, I get hit by this because the uh, projectile shot up and I did not move my character. I was in the middle of a channeled ability and I didn't want to cancel it. Um, in general, you probably do want to uh, want to clear it as often as you can. But once again, unlucky timing for me. I used this fix right at the end of my sunshine as it came up again. So I'm just going to tank it here. Um, Haraken is like one cyclable. It's also two cyclable as well, depending on you know your your gear and your setup and all that stuff. But at the end of the day, as long as you can survive it, it doesn't really matter how many cycles it takes. You don't take a ton of damage during this part of the boss fight um, for the most part. So it's kind of a, a simple situation where you can eat some food and take your time with it. And it shouldn't be a super, super stressful situation. Um, OK, so Hurricane's about to leave in a quick sec here. Go back down. And then I believe there's like 45 seconds of downtime where I'm kind of just running around like a headless chicken. Because this was a no food kill, for uh, for me, I had to play this very, very safely and very slowly because I'm taking a decent amount of damage here. And uh, because of all the tiny little hits from the tentacles, you're not really um, in a position where you can get a big resonance. So there aren't a ton of opportunities to gain too much HP. But as you can see, I'm mostly just running around here, clearing the tentacles as best as I can. And uh, there's not a whole lot to worry about. If you're standing in an area with like eight tentacles and they're bodying you, that's probably a situation where you either want to use a devotion and clear them quickly, or you could just move on to a different side of the room. And that should work out quite fine as well. Okay, Hurricane's about to spawn here. And something that I didn't talk about, um, he's going to come back up here. And when he does, you're going to notice that he's reducing all of my hits by 1200 damage. The reason for this is I didn't clear any of the tentacles around him. And because of this, there's a ton of damage reduction and it's reducing all of my hits. If this is the case and you end up with 1200 damage reduction, which I believe is as high as you can get, 
Um, it's probably worth clearing the tentacles instead of continuing to fight Hurricane. Because you're going to see here, I'm able to do almost no damage. Like, I'm really not hitting anything here. And uh, yeah, if this is the case and this is what's going on, you definitely want to clear some of the tentacles directly around him. Uh, they don't have a ton of HP. They're pretty quick to do. And it's something that is probably worth doing when he's kind of down, just making sure there aren't too, too many around. And this side, I just completely ignored while he was down. I was kind of hoping that Hurricane would spawn on the other side. And as a result of that, I really had to pay for that here. And I was not able to deal a ton of damage at all. So really, I'm just kind of hanging out here. I'm chilling, barely doing any damage, but it is also worth noting, they don't deal a ton of damage either. So even in a no food run, I found this wasn't quite the end of the world, but it definitely prolonged my kill by a good bit. There's not a whole lot else to add for this wave. Um, because it's a no food kill, I can't just brew up, which would make this a whole lot easier. And instead, I'm just kind of chilling in an area where there aren't too many tentacles, and I'm trying to lower the ones that are near me, so long as my life points don't get too low. Now, Hurricane is going to spawn again, and I believe this was a four cycle. You should never really need to do a four cycle, but because I made a bunch of mistakes and I wasn't doing a good job clearing the tentacles, I ended up having to do way more damage than the 300,000 that, uh, that Hurricane has. Okay. With Hurricane out of the way, let's talk about Zuck. First thing I do is I throw a Vuln Bomb, and I'm just building on Zuck, because although he's immune to damage, you can still make sure you're starting him off on 100% Adrenaline. I'm going to Sunshine right away, and his very first mechanic is You Will Break Beneath Me. When this happens, he's going to apply a Bleed onto you, and I found the easiest way to deal with it is just Freedom right away. It's important to Freedom right away, because you might need Freedom a little later on in the wave, um, like roughly 30 seconds from now, which is the cooldown on freedom. So if I were to freedom in like 10 seconds, I could end up in a bad spot. You want to freedom this one right away if you're choosing to deal with it that way. I'm also going to mention that the Zuck fight does not deal nearly as much damage as a lot of other parts of the waves, and Zuck is definitely easier than waves 12 or 13. Uh, so there's no need to panic when you get here. It's uh, a boss fight you can really take low and slow for the most part. And uh, I think there are a couple DPS checks later on, but for the bulk fight where he's just attacking you, he does not hit super hard so long as you deal with the mechanics correctly. So first mechanic, I have Sunshine and I've used Freedom right there. The second mechanic, what he's going to do is he's going to put a Burn Bleed on me and uh, he's going to say Suffer. When he does this, you need to move 15 squares to clear it completely. Instead of sort of aimlessly running around, my recommendation would be to simply hit the Surge button and then run back to your Sunshine. And in doing so, you'll see I will immediately cover that 15 squares. That's 10 right there for my surge. And then in running back, I'll get to 15, um, which will then just completely nullify the attack. What it does is it reduces your maximum health. It's uh, pretty dangerous if this happens. And if you do get your maximum health reduced, I would totally recommend bringing a super restore so you can um, you can rejuvenate it and bring it back up to full. Because I had a couple of kills where my max HP was like 2000. And then I just died to a single auto attack because I wasn't paying attention. It looks like your health bar is completely full. But uh, if you look down at your action bar, it's like 2,000 out of 2,000. So uh, definitely want to be careful for it. But as long as you just hit the surge button and then run back into your sunshine or where you initially were, you should be completely good to go. Um, and a lot of Zuck's mechanics are sort of dealt with in a similar way. The next mechanic is the earth yields to me. Uh, and here, what I'm going to do is run around aimlessly. What I would recommend doing is just once again, hit the surge button and then sort of rotate around away from the cracks on the floor. So generally what he's going to do, if I were to surge right here, is he's going to make an arc with his sword, either in 180 degrees following my cursor that way, or this way. And depending on which way he spins, generally all you'd want to do is rotate 3 o'clock from that point. So if I surge to here, and he spins this way, I'm going to end up landing right there, and it will be 100% safe. Uh, so you kind of either end up up here, or down there. So I'm going to lose my sunshine here, but I'm going to deal with the mechanic without losing a single HP. Um, in this instance, I messed it up because I was panicking and I was still learning the boss at this time. And I'm sort of aimlessly running around at this stage, and that's not completely ideal. As you can see, I am burning and I'm starting to take some magic damage, and that's not exactly what you want to see. The next mechanic is he will say be gone. When he says be gone, you can either use resonance or disruption shield, and it's about a 4k typeless hit. So uh, it'll bop you on the head. Alternatively, you can just eat up because it's a singular hit of 4k. But uh, if you deal with that mechanic correctly, you won't be burning and it should be super, super easy to time. Um, in Full Obsidian, as well as the Debilitate ability, which I used just a bit earlier, it only hits an 800. But uh, in like standard gear with Debilitate, it hit about a 2k. After Zex has begun, you've got a bit of time to do some free DPS. And I've also used Freedom there for the burn that I had. It wasn't doing a ton of damage, but kind of may as well at a certain point. Um, you're going to notice that I'm going to start things off by using Anticipate because the next special attack is a bit of a DPS check. And using Anticipate will stop him from stunning you for three seconds, which gives you a head start, which is quite helpful. So he's going to say Fall Now and Burn to Ash, 
I'm gonna use anticipate and then he's gonna drag me and he's gonna pull me to the northeast corner of the room. What's gonna happen now is he's gonna spawn three mobs in different parts of the room, one after the other, always in the exact same order. And then he's gonna light the remainder of the room on fire. If you stand in the fire, it will tick you 2000 damage with magic very, very rapidly. So you will die almost immediately. So you wanna get over to effectively the slice of pizza that is safe. And that's why a lot of people are calling this part of the boss fight pizza time. In using anticipate, I didn't get stunned for three seconds and the first mob always spawns south. So we're gonna head over south. And as you can see, there is an Igneous Zek Har Her. Um, this is the one that you have to stun it to be able to deal full damage to. So I'm gonna tag it by attacking with impact. Um, quick thing to note is if I stand kind of anywhere else in the arena right now, I'm safe. But then as soon as you see these particles show up, that is when if you stand there, you're gonna take a ton of magic damage and you're probably gonna die. This is a bit of a DPS check. You need to be able to clear all three of these mobs as effectively or as quickly as you possibly can in order to access your special action button and then stagger Zuck, preventing him from performing an insta-kill on you. So I'm gonna be using some strong thresholds. If you had a Guthic Staff EOF, that would also be a really good thing to bring, but I didn't have an EOF in this run, so I'm instead just using thresholds as well as Omni Power. Uh, now, the spawns are always exactly the same. So the first mob spawns south, and then after that, um, it's gonna be northwest over on my cursor, and then after that, it will be northeast, which is where you originally started. So first mob is down. I'm just going to get back on Zuck. He doesn't take any damage, but I'm just building adrenaline. And now I'm going to head back over to the northwest corner where I'm going to then attack the uh, the ranger. And for the ranger, you have to hit him with a threshold to stop him from healing and to deal full damage. So I'm going to tag on with a wild magic. Then I'm going to go in to an asphyxiate. It's also worth noting this is a part of the fight where you can definitely soul split. You should not need um, to use protect prayers here. You won't be taking a ton of damage. Um, it's also worth noting as well, if you're struggling with this part, the maniacal aura would help an absolute ton. But if you pay a bit of attention to which thresholds you're using, it should be relatively manageable without. Here we go. Second one is down. And then we are getting on to the third one. Also worth noting, if you're a little bit slow to kill um, one of the mobs, you definitely don't want to just continue standing, um, you know, where that mob is. You want to continue to move along to the safe area and the mob will just kind of follow you and you'll be able to attack it a little later on and finish it off that way. So it's not the end of the world if it doesn't die immediately, but definitely you want to keep going with the flow and keep moving on to the next slice. Um, for this mob, you just need to deal damage inside of the bubble to hit full. And I'm going to use a second Omni Power just because it is available. It's off cooldown and it is extremely strong so long as you have the cape, which you have to have unlocked in order to do hard mode. And after that, we are getting back on Zuck. He's charging up his special attack. And what I'm doing is for a quick second there, I was just building adrenaline because I know I have a little bit of time, but that can be a little spooky because if you wait too long, you will get insta-killed. And no, it's not something you can use a mortality on either. It will just straight up insta-kill you. I hit the special action button. It says you interrupt the powerful attack. And guess what? That is everything you need to know about the first like 85 or 90% of the Zuck fight because all it does now is it repeats. Okay, at this point, I'm just looking for a cycle where I deal with all the mechanics the way that I would recommend doing it or the easiest way. As you can see there, I used freedom on the first special attack. And then as soon as he says anything, second mechanic, the seer, I am going to surge and run back to my sunshine. And that is going to clear that bleed. For the third special attack, for a lot of these, um, these cycles of Zuck, I was not surging, but I still think surge is a really easy way to do it. As you can see, there's a quick surge. I am gonna get a magic auto attack here because I went a little bit too far, but I'm not getting blood or anything. And it just immediately dodged everything for me, which is pretty easy. Just a surge and then move a couple squares from there and you're totally safe. Um, the next attack after that was the one where on a cycle one, he says die. Here he says, full flame burns within me. Basically it's whatever he says on the special attack after the um, trouble before me, that's gonna be the rock that drops on your head. I just tanked it with my face, but it's also very easy to resonance or disruption shield if you care to do so. And then just like that, we go back into pizza time. It's going to continue forever until you reach 100,000 life points. So we are just going to skip ahead a little bit here. Now we are 102,000 life points, which means as soon as I use my special action button and get Zuck to 100k, we are in to the final phase, which is where things get a little more interesting, kind of. What you're going to see now is the spire that is in the middle of the room. Uh, what you need to do for this entire phase is you need to be moving around. If you choose to use melee, a lot of your damage is going to come from using greater barge and then applying a bleed and then running away. Because if you are in the radius of this thing, it will hit you a 10k right up close and then a 2k if you're as far away as you can get. The main strategy for this is literally just run in a big box and you will automatically completely dodge everything. Now, 
In addition to this, every time you kill this thing one singular time, as you can see, it's like fairly close to dead. Uh, every time you kill it, Zuck is then going to shoot a 15k typeless hit towards you. Uh, 15k sounds like a lot, but it's actually fairly easy to deal with in a number of ways. Um, the best way to deal with it is Disruption Shield, and what I've done is I've pre-Disruption Shielded beforehand, because I'm not going to take any damage for anything, nothing's going to break it, and as soon as I kill this first conduit, what's going to happen is he's going to shoot his insta-kill at me or his 15k hit at me, and you're going to see it's just not going to hit anything, and it's going to burn my Disruption Shield. Um, and that is what that was right there. Alternatively, you can also use Resonance, and you can even use things like Reflect, or just a Power Burst of Vitality. If you don't feel like using anything, a Vitpot will work. It launches it about five seconds after you kill the conduit. So the second you kill the conduit, if you were to use your rezo or hit your power burst, it will save you. As you can see here, I am now going for my second conduit down. And then I believe what I'm gonna do here, if I'm smart, is I am going to use resonance because it's available and it will block the damage. So there is my rezo. You need to be pretty careful because um, the ground thing hit me there and that would have sniped my rezo. Had that happened, I would have had to power burst. But uh, as you can see, I use rezo and it is going to hit me a zero. At that point, my Wandering Orb can go back on and we can continue attacking the Conduit. Uh, this phase is very repetitive. It's kind of weird. I'm not gonna lie. The uh, yeah, primary mechanic is just run on a box. And so long as you can do that, you can take as long as you'd like with it. Um, you can use the Endurance Relic to just not have to drain red energy. What I did here is I have a Stamina Potion in my Invet that I decided to go for and it's really just a matter of running around. Something worth noting as well that I would say is super important is if you have um, your middle mouse button set to rotate the camera, that can help a whole lot, just so that you don't need to worry about like, you know, taking your hand off of your mouse to stop running around in order to rotate. And it's actually a default setting in RuneScape to have your middle mouse button work for camera rotating. For this one, I actually didn't need to power burst it, but I thought I would just to, you know, save me a bit of damage. I'm also using the reflectability and that's gonna hit me a 4K normally without, um, Having Obsidian Armor, this would be a 7,500 hit through Reflect or a 15k outside of it. And now we are continuing going through this Conduit. And as you can see, this part of the boss fight isn't like super, super intense or crazy, crazy difficult. It's more just a matter of, can you run in a box for long enough to get this Conduit down? You can also Vuln the Conduit if you want to. I just found it wasn't super needed or super worth it, but you know, whatever floats your boat if you would like to. And as you can see, I pre-disruption shielded there. It's on my buff bar, which means for the next uh, one-shot attack, I don't actually have to do anything. I can just continue attacking. And as soon as it's 20K, that means as soon as you kill the conduit one final time, that will be the completion of your run. And that will mean that you've successfully gone to the place and done the thing, which is pretty cool. So at this point, I'm gonna chug a couple more abilities. I am gonna keep running around. And that is sort of everything that you need to know about uh, I would say doing a no food hard mode Zuck run in possibly not the greatest gear in the history of the universe. There we go. Uh, it says the kill took too long to track. It was about an hour and five minutes. If I hadn't made so many mistakes on phases uh, 12 and 13, I think it would have probably been 55 minutes, something like that. And I also took my time on Zuck and on Haraken, and I think those are totally fair, good things to do. I played them safe, I played them slow and low, and that's exactly what you want to do when you're no fooding. If I'd been using food and I'd been on Manny, I'm guessing that's probably like a 40 minute run right around there, which is still, you know, not the speediest thing in the world. The fastest people are doing runs in like 22, 23 minutes. Hopefully, uh, hopefully this is helpful. Hopefully you guys learned some tips or about how some of the mobs work or some little things about positioning. Uh, my apologies again that I don't have time to make a full guide, but hopefully this, uh, this tides you guys through or holds you guys over until I have the opportunity to do so. Outside of that, I hope everyone's well. Have a good one, guys, and I will see you in the next video that will probably be, you know, a little more formal, a little more produced as they usually are. Take care, everyone, and I'll see you in the next one.